was under the impression me and my dad would walk down the aisle together. I didn't think there would be 10, 15 people walking in with us. And then my stepmom kind of got pushed to the back there. Pushing Kim's stepmom away from her side on her wedding day isn't exactly good form. Kim has every right to want her there beside her. So is this the point where Kim gets angry? Is she about to throw yet another tantrum? Well, not exactly. And then I see TJ on the stage and I'm like, He's what I'm doing this for. He's everything. Wow, what's this we're seeing? Is it, could it possibly be growth? Well, <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. So before we dive into the final celebrations of Kim and TJ's wedding, let's just rewind to the beginning. So we left Kim frustrated about the lack of communication. You see, Kim felt like she was out of the loop at her own wedding. But with the final part of the celebration still to come, the part that actually makes this all official, the question is, will TJ learn from his mistakes? Will he try to involve her and keep her in the loop a bit more? Tonight is the night of our wedding and it's gonna be a long night with lots of ceremonies. I am feeling a luckiest person because I'm going to marry the love of my life. TJ seems so charming. He's got that Labrador puppy dog energy that it's almost impossible not to like. The way he lights up when he's talking about Kim is really cute. But for all of Kim's faults, we've almost forgotten that TJ hasn't been honest with her. He's allowing Kim to marry him under false pretenses. She has no idea what her life in India post-marriage is really going to be like. But as he arrives to his wedding on horseback, as per Hindu tradition, Kim's parents are there to greet him. What? Yeah. <laughs> the bride's mom pinches, the groom snores. It's just like uh, a sweet tradition. It's nice to watch Kim's family integrate and take part in this ceremony. They might not understand it all, but at least today, there's someone by their side. There's someone explaining to them what this is all about and what they should do. Fireworks go off as TJ enters the venue, and you can see from his face that TJ feels on top of the world. He feels like a million bucks. So how's Kim feeling right now? Fireworks are on me, a lights are on me. I'm really pumped up right now. I feel like I might be getting more nervous as the time passes, but I am ready to marry TJ. That's more like it, Kim. Yes, finally. It's nice to see her as excited as TJ for once. It is both of their weddings after all. It's crazy to think that just three days ago, these two had broken up. Now, as Kim walks down the aisle, we're told that traditionally in India, it would be her siblings who'd be walking beside her. Her siblings would give her away. But as none of her siblings are here, there's just one thing that Kim specifically requested. The one thing I wanted was my dad to walk me down the aisle. He's my biggest supporter and it's the Western tradition that I really want to hold true to. You can really feel the love and the deep respect that Kimberly has for her dad. So with all the countless ceremonies and formalities that have taken place during this wedding, all of which have been out of her control, it's really nice that she stood her ground about this one thing. I mean, you've got to imagine that every father wants to walk their daughter down the aisle. It would have been horrible for him to have missed out on that. But unfortunately, it's not all smooth sailing. I was under the impression me and my dad would walk down the aisle together. I didn't think there would be 10, 15 people walking in with us. And then my stepmom kind of got pushed to the back there for a little while. Perhaps TJ's family didn't get the memo. Maybe they don't understand the significance of this moment from a Western perspective. But Kim's experience during these last few days has really forced her to grow up. It's brought into focus that this is all for a bigger purpose. Things might not exactly go to plan, but there's just no need to throw a tantrum. And it feels like this is something that Kimberly is finally learning. She's able to just brush it off. And I think a couple of days ago, that would have been next to impossible. And then I see TJ on the stage and I'm like, 
He's what I'm doing this for. He's everything. It's really nice to watch for a change. Seeing them here like this, watching them gazing lovingly into each other's eyes, almost makes it easy to forget all of their problems. Now, the commencement of their Hindu wedding finally starts with the exchanging of flowers. And this means we're finally on the home straight. I feel really excited. I'm gonna be with the man I wanna spend the rest of my life with. It just seems like a fairy tale coming true. And they really look the part of a fairy tale too. Kim's stepmom observes that they look like a prince and a princess. But this princess isn't going anywhere when the clock strikes 12. Because she has ceremonies to attend. TJ reveals that while the flowers symbolise that they are now married, there is yet another ritual that'll make it official. And that one is going to be quite late. In our religion, priest calculates the whole planetary situation, the exact time you need to tie, and we are going to marry between midnight and four. Ah yes, astrology. <laughs> if you've been watching this show for any length of time, heck, if you've seen many of my Jenny and Summit videos, or even my Jen and Rishi videos, you'll know that astrology plays a very large role for many Indian families. It's an incredibly important consideration when it comes to marriage. Now, using both Kimberly and TJ's birth charts, it's been calculated that for the best possible luck to stand the best chance of success, these two should get married between midnight and 4am, which gives ample room for yet another outfit change. In the Hindu tradition, groom is supposed to be a Vishnu. Vishnu is a god. Well, right now he is like a god and we, we will worship him. There's definitely a lot of symbolism and beauty in many of these Hindu ceremonies, but this one, for many of us, with the wiping of the feet, is a bit jarring. But with that being said, let's just take a minute to applaud how well Kim's parents have been doing for this wedding. Not only have they been entirely respectful for a culture I'm sure they don't know too much about, but beyond that, they've actually seemed excited to participate. They know how much it means to TJ, to their son-in-law, I guess we can now call him. Kimberly's parents are so into this wedding, even they didn't know about anything. And that's a lovely thing. And I, I really appreciate them. I'm really thankful for them. They are doing this for me. It's now 12.45 a.m. and the ceremonies are still continuing. You can see the exhaustion on all the faces. This is now the final last ceremony of the lot. It's called the Seven Promises. The bride and groom will be tied together and they'll now walk around a flame seven times. The actual ceremony consists of rounds around a fire and a, a worship or a puja of sorts where your souls combine. So surely, surely this is the end of it now, right? Wrong. <laughs> it's 4.05am at this point, and the two of them are still going strong. I'm exhausted just watching this. They now share the Hindu equivalent of vows, and Kim, in her bleary-eyed, tired state, promises to smile whenever TJ smiles. And that warms the hearts of everyone still left standing. And now, well, yes, now it's done. It's official. TJ and Kim are now married. And I feel like this wedding alone has been a huge learning curve for her. She's learned patience. She's learned about Indian culture. She's met all of TJ's family. But most importantly, she's learned that for her, the most important thing is TJ. All the rest is just background noise. This is my husband. Yeah, and we are married, happily married. It started with a text message, and now we are married. It started with a dream. It started with a dream, sorry. But sadly, as we all know, fairy tales don't last. In fact, what Kimberly's about to experience is almost like a reverse Cinderella. She's gonna go from princess to houseworker. This dream might just turn into a nightmare after all.